let's get one thing straight. I don't mind Ubisoft games. A lot of people moan about the grind and the monetization. But you can get through a Ubisoft game without paying a dime. And I don't I don't know why people think that you have to pay. It's there. All these weird shortcut things. But you'd literally you do not have to you do not have to buy them. You can get through the whole game without touching ever touching them. And trust me, I've done near off every Ubisoft game and I've never paid a dime. Ever. And I hundred percent do them. So that I just want to get that out of the way for a minute. Skull and Bones was touted as a quadruple A game. Firstly, my arse. Secondly, never. And thirdly, uh, bollocks. Um, but it was. I've, I've seen in the, these new uh, news articles that it's. They're saying. Ubisoft is saying that it's breaking certain records. So I thought, well, what are these certain records? Because from what I heard, it's doing pretty, pretty damn crap. It's doing pretty poo. So have a guess what these records that Ubisoft are seeing that this game is breaking. Have a guess. Okay. Have you guessed yet? Right. Well, here's the record. You ready? I've been like, I've, 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 Lightened it up there. Are you ready? Skull and Bones players have been averaging four hours daily playtime since launch. Ooh! Ain't that good, eh? Long you know, four hours of they play daily playtime since launch. That's a record. They are boasting about that. What they're not telling you is nobody's playing it. I think there's, I think there's what two thousand and odd people on the. Um, they don't even have it on Steam, do they? They've not released it on Steam. They released it on the Epic Game Store. So uh, nobody's buying it. That's probably one of the reasons. But again, even on console, console is anybody playing the game? And if they are, why are they playing it when Assassin's Creed Black Flag exists? And Assassin's Creed Rogue exists. Now when it comes to the, the warfare, the, the ships and the whatnot, I think Rogue beats Black Flag in that sense. The game itself is very mid in Rogue. Uh, the Black, uh, Black Flag game is a lot better. But the actual ships and the naval warfare, Rogue kills it. So if I was going to play either one of the two and it was just to do with the pirate boat thing, I'd go with Rogue. But... Saying that, Ubisoft, not only did they come out with this stupid, <laughs> what they call a record, people playing a game for four hours daily, ooh, amazing, uh, they've also come out with this on the same day, which is uh, Ubisoft are claiming that Far Cry, uh, the Skull and Bones, isn't their first quadruple quadruple A game? I don't want to say the word quadruple A anymore. They're saying it's the first quadruple A game, but apparently that they're saying it's not their first quadruple A game. I in hate saying the word quadruple A game. Apparently, according to Ubisoft, their first quadruple A game. Was Far Cry 6, according to them. According to them, the first quadruple, quad, I don't want to say it, can I please stop saying it? The first long A's game was uh, Far Cry 6. Now, if they truly believe that Far Cry 6 is a quad, how many times do I have to say this word? It, it just keeps cropping up. Is their first quadruple A game. They are literally bonkers because Far Cry 6 is better than Far Cry 5, 
but it's not as good as Far Cry 4 and it's certainly not as good as Far Cry 3 and then none of them are f no, I don't want to say it again quadruple A game none of them are that so what the hell are they on about Far Cry 6 was mid at best I want to say mid I mean middle of the road middle of the road it was a good single player experience i what's the word for it i enjoyed my time while i was there but you see what they've done with far cry games is in the old far cry games they used to put little side missions in that you'd go and find and it'd take you on a little journey and this little journey would lead you into madness basically they did it with three did it with four uh not so much with five as i say um but they did that's what they did then over time they took those little side missions out and what they left you with was far cry 6 and it was just basically do your job on this island uh get all your outposts liberate all your outposts blah 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 blah, blah. but there was none of these little secret missions these, these little secret nuggets of fun and what they did is they took them what they used to put in the game and they turned them all into dlc and then you have to spend 30 quid on dlc to, to get these little nuggets of um magic now the magic made the far cry game go and play far cry 3 as an example you'll understand exactly what i'm saying or far cry 4 even far cry 4 does the same thing you take these little nuggets of magic and they've took them out of the main game and put them into DLC. Now, them little nuggets of magic make the game because it takes you off the path. It takes you into. A, yeah, everybody's played a big mapped game. You know, you know exactly what I'm on about. And they turn it into DLC. But when you play it as DLC, it's not the same because you're not in the world. You're just tuning in to play some DLC, so it doesn't give the same effect. They should have just put it in the game. The shooting, everything was just, it was, it's got to have been made on the same engine as Far Cry 5 was. It didn't seem like anything new. It just felt, let's go back to an island, because that's what Far Cry 3 was. Surely people will love that. And for the most part, it, it, was, it was okay. It was an okay game. But it wasn't great. It was not, I'm going to say it again, it was not a quadruple game. Quad, quadruple game, quadruple A game. So yeah, I think Ubisoft took some pills last night and uh, they've uh, had a day of spouting absolute bollocks. But good for them, if that's what they believe. You know, it's their truth. <laughs>